I was asked about my workflow with the GR cameras and how I edited when I was out shooting, whether I did all the editing in camera or if I used the Rico Image Sync app to transfer images to edit on the phone. So I thought I would do a quick video showing the process of transferring and then editing using Adobe Lightroom. I will be using the iPad mini but the process is the same for the iPhone and I'm sure it will be very similar on an Android device. I'm going to guide you through transferring the image using the Image Sync app using either a GR2, 3 or 3X camera. The GR2 was the first camera to incorporate the NFC near field connectivity where it would essentially produce its own Wi-Fi hotspot which you would then connect a tablet or a phone to transfer the images with the Image Sync app. I'm going to edit a street portrait from last week in the Lightroom mobile app and edit it in both colour and black and white for you to see and then export it to the device's photo library ready for posting to social media. I hope you enjoy. Here is some of the video from last week when I was shooting in the west end of Glasgow. Just before this I met a group of guys stripping out an old restaurant who were taking a break and were all covered in dust from the work. I took some images of them before approaching and asking if I could take a couple of portraits. One of the guys here had a great face and this is the image I will be editing. The first thing to do is transfer the image from your camera to your device. So you need to enable the NFC or Wi-Fi. You do this by pressing the button on the left hand side of the camera. A short press of the button will enable the camera's hotspot and the Wi-Fi symbol will appear in the top middle of the display to show it is active. It will disappear after a few seconds but the Wi-Fi will still be on. Grab your device and go to your settings and Wi-Fi and the GR network should be there. Connect to the network which should start with GR and then a series of letters and numbers. Now you're connected to the camera's Wi-Fi hotspot. You want to open the Image Sync app. Your images on the card and on the camera's internal memory should now start to appear in the browser. They may take a few seconds to load if, like me, you shoot RAW. Click on an image and it will expand to full screen where you can now flick through and select the image you want to download. On the bottom right of the image, click the black arrow pointing down and the transfer will start with a progress bar racing across the top of the image. Once the transfer has completed, check in your Photos app that the image is there. Remember, it will file in date order, so you may need to scroll back to find it. Once you have confirmed the image is in your photo library, you are ready to import it into Lightroom. Open the app and click on the blue button on the bottom right of the window with the picture frame and plus sign, not the camera symbol. A pop-up menu will appear where you want to click From Camera Roll and this will access the images on your device. Scroll through your images and click the image you want to edit. The image will now be imported to the Lightroom window where we can start the edit. With drop down menus on the right, we start with the one titled Light, which will give us options for Exposure, Contrast, Highlight and Shadow and Whites and Blacks. I start by lifting the exposure by close to half a stop, then adding some contrast before moving to adjust the highlights so I don't lose detail in the highlight on the right of the subjects here. Next I lift the shadows before tweaking the whites and blacks. At this stage I think he's looking good, but maybe a wee bit cold. So I click the colour drop down to adjust the colour temperature and saturation. After that I move to the effects menu and add a slight vignette which helps hold the viewer's attention on the subject. I'm now going to add the first of three masks by clicking the circle on the very right hand toolbar. A pop-up menu appears where you choose Linear Gradient. Reduce the size of the image in the window and click a starting point and drag over the image. The coverage will be shown in red before you move to adjust exposure and highlight. This gradient will help to control that highlight on the subjects here and darken down the top of the image. Click Done and you'll be back to the main editing window. I'm going to use the light and the colour drop downs again to adjust contrast and colour temperature. The image is just about complete, but I'm going to add two more masks, one on either side of the image. This will again help to keep the viewer's attention on the subject. We use the same process as before, clicking the circle on the right hand toolbar and clicking linear gradient from the pop-up menu and making the adjustments as before. I am now happy with the edits here and think we have added some drama to this street portrait and it's time to export. Click the box with the arrow pointing up and you have the option to export to Photoshop where, if I was being picky, 
I would possibly use the dodge and burn tool to lift the eyes and bring down the highlight on the subject's nose. This would be a very minor adjustment, so I'm just going to go ahead and export back to the device and it will be stored in your photo app. I've added here the side by side of the raw image we started with and the edited image so you can see the difference. I'm now going to edit the image in black and white, so I will revert back to the unadjusted raw image and edit using the same techniques and make a slightly more dramatic image. You need to click the curved arrow at the bottom of the edit window here and reset the adjustments so we can start again from scratch. As I'll be using much of the same techniques, I'll speed this up, but I will list all the final adjustments for both colour and black and white in the description below. Both these edits I think enhance the image, but I would be more inclined to export the black and white image to Photoshop so I could use the dodge and burn tool to make it a bit more dramatic. All the edits here fall within what is determined as darkroom techniques. I've put them both side by side again at the end of the video so you can see which one you prefer. The video is time marked so you can come back to see the edits or transfer process from your GR camera. Please leave me a comment and let me know what you think of the two edits and which one is your favourite. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more Ricoh GR and general photography videos. As always, thanks for watching.